Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on crypto. Hope you had a great day. We got a few things to talk about, I'm trying to keep the list short today. Um, we have Binance US being valued at $4.5 billion. That is just the US arm of Binance. Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz comes back amid a whole bunch of issues that he's trying to deal with as the interim CEO of Starbucks. And during a all hands call, you know, town hall, basically, he's announced that Starbucks will be involved in NFTs by the end of the year, whatever that means. Pay Maya, the, the largest digital payment company in the Philippines, has announced they're going to allow crypto trading in their wallets. That means that people that already have their wallet will have these features built in. Slick. Um, no secret that Philippines wants to, you know, increase adoption of cryptocurrencies. Um, and a very smart move that I think you have Marathon Digital Holdings saying that for their Montana facility, they're going to switch or transition from fossil fuels to sustainable fuels. What they want to do is they want to be, they have already committed to being 100% carbon neutral by the end of the year. That's all I got to say. Um, India. Wow. You're experiencing brain drain in India because of, you know, high taxes on cryptos and they're making it difficult to open up, you know, crypto startups in India, it's two strikes. Now they are still in bed with Russia. Now imagine how that looks to countries like the United States, who's been speaking with them and partnering with them with all kinds of things, uh, food and fuel, you know, energy issues, food issues around the world, that kind of thing. Um, Imagine how that looks to the rest of the world that you are still trying to do business and not just continue doing business, but do more business with Russia. That tells the world where your loyalties are. Now, in my head, you know, coming from a con consulting background, I'm looking at how many companies around the world rely on India based resources to, you know, get the job done. I think that's going to wind up repatriating a lot of jobs around the world. And that could be big. If you're, if you're a CEO in the United States and you know you've outsourced a lot, <laughs> most likely too much, to India, um, that's going to definitely have a role or be a line item in your you know, monthly, weekly talks with your team. What are we going to do? Are we going to repatriate those jobs? Are we going to move them to other places? Well you could be seeing a lot of things that could happen. If the United States decides enough is enough, we're going to hit India with some economic problems, excuse me, until they change their ways. That could be an issue for a lot of U.S. businesses that rely heavily on resources from India. That said, remember, they're experiencing brain drain. So you have a lot of resources just leaving India and going to other countries, United States, Portugal, U.K., just countries that are more... Um, friendly, for lack of a better term, to cryptocurrencies. Uh, if you're going to the UK, that could be a really smart place because the UK, I reported yesterday, UK is, you know, trying to be, you know, get into a positive position with cryptos. The reason why they want to stick it to the EU, right? Kind of outmaneuver the EU, become a hub, and that bumps them up and, you know, makes their economy a hell of a lot better and more reliable. But you have a lot of countries around the world, even the Bahamas, um, you know, that are more friendly to those resources that are going to wind up leaving India or have already left India. That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. And that could lead to, you know, have an economic impact on the companies here in the United States. So I'm just wondering how that's going to play out. And I just, I just sit back and I continue to think the leadership in India just is not thinking or they're thinking, but not in the right way. You know, um, maybe they don't care that they're, you know, having a little bit of a brain drain in a specific 
industry. Do you want to leave? Leave. Whatever. I can understand that. But being that that's a future looking industry, that can wind up being a problem for them. But, you know, I don't know. So let's dig into a couple of these things. I mean, I've spoken enough about India. That was just my little side note. But Binance US, wow, $4.5 billion valuation. What? Just the US operation. Here's why. Binance is the biggest in the world, but the biggest in the United States is Coinbase. By far. By far. There was a, the report I was reading, I forgot which... Uh, which uh, website I was looking at, but they had said that, you know, for the looking at spot trading right there, um, FTX was only had 10% of the trades that Coinbase had. Um, that's a big deal. Uh, not FTX, that Binance had 10% of the trades and, and FTX is doing just as poorly. But they are an upstart in the country, so is FTX, but Binance getting $200 million dollars an evaluation of $4.5 billion. I think the only thing they're going to use that money for is marketing. Marketing, marketing, marketing. They want to grow the share, and I think they're going to steal that share directly from Coinbase. Because I don't know that you're going to take share from FTX. I don't know that you're going to take share from a crypto.com. Those are each smaller exchanges. You're going to bite into Coinbase's share, and you're going to have to do a lot to make that happen. A lot, a lot. Um, you've got to be in most of the state, in just about all the states of the United States, um, United States holdings. Um, you've got to have a boatload of coins that, you know, that you can trade, NFTs, whatever. Um, you have to have an easy to use platform. And I have a Binance. I have a Binance account, Binance US account. Um, I think that it, it's doable. Um, Coinbase can't stay where it is, you know, for all this time, which is why they're branching out in the world. Um, so is Binance, the parent company of Binance. And I have another piece of news about Binance. Um, but you look at that and you're just like, wow, that's, those are big numbers. Those are really big numbers. And so I'm expecting over the next, you know, few months that you're going to see some major ads by Binance because where Binance is right now is practically with no marketing whatsoever. So that's a big deal. That's pretty slick. That's pretty slick. But but why? It, it it's possibly because you know I did a I did a video a few days ago about wallets, and it's possibly because it's one of the reasons why I did it. Binance had coins that I could not get on Coinbase. I believe Shib was one of them. Um, so it's a big deal on what's out there. Again, a lot of people like myself you know, more seasoned people have multiple wallets, not just one. So are you really taking, you know, from them, you, it, it would be that we got registrations and our registrations bumped up. It doesn't mean registrations on Coinbase goes down. What you're really trying to do is increase your registrations as well as increase the number of trades that you can do or that are happening on your platform. That's what they're really going for. So they're going to have to go after lower fees, which I believe they have. Um, it's, I, think it's, I think it's cheaper to do business on, to do trades on Binance at any time, at almost any time than versus Coinbase. And Coinbase has a lot of fees, a lot of fees. It's ridiculous. Um, so that's, that's something I'm looking at and I'm like, good move. And another move, um, Binance, the parent company, has is a part of a team that's invested in the creators of um, Axie Infinity, Axie Infinity, sorry, um, which is Sky Mavis. $150 million is what is the lead that they that they did. So that's going to be a big deal. Remember, Axie Infinity was a part of that whole Ronin Bridge hack, which led to about 600 and some odd million dollars being stolen in cryptos. So that's going to be a big deal. Even with that hack, Axie Infinity is strong. It's really strong. It, it didn't take them out of business. It didn't take Ronan Bridge out of business. That didn't make them look good, obviously, but didn't take them out of business. So that says that, you know, they have um, the ability to sustain themselves, to take a hit, make the corrections, keep going. 
So that's a big deal. That's a very big deal. So I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm kind of, I'm kind of going, that's a cool move. Back to Starbucks. I'm looking at Starbucks and I'm going, so, you know, a week or two ago, I mean, I cracked a joke that um, back in the day, if you, if you put .com after your name, that you're going to get funding. Yeah. It, it's almost like this right now, right? If you, if you say you're doing something with Web3, you're doing something with crypto, you're doing something with NFTs, you're touching in a space that, you know, you're saying to the world, oh, hey, we have our finger on the pulse. Starbucks made the announcement, but that, what does that mean? What are you doing? Are you going to create a bunch of NFTs to sell? Are you going to use NFTs to join a membership, you know, an exclusive membership within, you know, Starbucks to get special coffees or whatever? Or are they actually just going to release, you know, music or artwork? Um, or are they going to, you know, release their own marketplace? Who knows? But, oh, we're going to get involved with NFTs. Okay. That'll be interesting. So we made note today. Hopefully in the future, we'll be able to say, hey, I, we spoke about that on X day. And this is what they said. And now this is what they're doing. And we'll see if that, if it, if it adds up, right? We'll see if it happens. Pay Maya, you know, largest, you know, digital payment company in Philippines. Smart move. Philippines um, definitely wants to be crypto friendly. They want major adoption of crypto in Philippines. And I said a long time ago, there are smaller economic countries around the world that are going to adopt crypto. And those countries are going to wind up doing better than countries that are fighting crypto, right? Look at Singapore, it's around the corner from Philippines. Why, why are you fighting crypto? Well, it's because they're a traditional finance like haven or hub actually is a better word. So these United States, there's UK, Singapore. Those are the three, those are three of the biggest hubs around the world. There are more, don't get me wrong, there are more, but those are three of the biggest. Um, so I can understand why Singapore has such pushback against crypto. But if Sigma Singapore was listening to my video yesterday, I believe, they should be listening to that and going, well, wait a minute. Jamie Dimon just said that Chase is involved in crypto. They are. Um, to what extent? Don't know. But I know that they're in the space. That's a big financial institution saying, hey, we're in it. We're in it. Praising DeFi, right? Pla praising blockchain. And Singapore is going, ah! stupid. Philippines is saying, yeah, let's rock and roll. Because what do you think? Pay Maya, you know, did it on their own? No, they got they got an okay. They've integrated everything. They're not announcing that they're going to do something. They've done it. They've already started. As a matter of fact, I have a list of coins. They're doing obviously Bitcoin, Ethereum, but Cardano, Polygon, Chainlink, Uniswap, Solana, Polkadot, Quant, and Tether. Wow. Wow, wow. Just listen to that list. I'll say it again. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Polygon, that's Matic, uh, Chainlink, Connective Tissue, know how much I love that, Uniswap, Solana, Polkadot, Quant, and Tether. <coughs> Excuse me. That's a big deal. That's a huge, huge big deal. Because that means whoever has their wallet on their phone they're already capable of buying, trading crypto. It's there automatically. They don't have to do anything extra. Know your customer. They've already done that. They have the wallet. Done. They don't have to jump through any hoops. So that means that this company is saying, you can, you can handle crypto. You can play with crypto. We're going to help you learn more about crypto. That's the game in Philippines. Smart move. Smart move. Another smart move is Marathon Digital Holdings, Marathon, big Bitcoin miner. Um, currently, their, their facility in Montana relies on fossil fuels. They have a commitment to getting to 100% carbon neutral status, that is. So in, in looking at that, they want to they transition that facility to being obviously re more reliant or reliant upon sustainable energy. 
that would seriously reduce their risk if there's an energy fuel shortage, right? Because that would decrease productivity. And what kind of a hit would that be given how much they mine in Bitcoin? Wow. Let that wash over you. They're saying, nope, we don't want that risk. We don't want the risk of having an outage. We don't want the risk of decreased productivity. And we want to do something good for the environment. Beautiful press release. <laughs> they winning all the way around, right? We're going to transition. We're committed to being 100% carbon neutral. Imagine being able to stand up in front of your shareholders and saying that and doing so while not losing money. Doing so while not losing money. Wow. Good job. Good job. And again, I've harped on India. I'm just, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Just really? Can you, can you do anything else wrong? There are a lot of things you can do right, right? You can look around the world and see who's doing what. 30% tax rate on cryptos, hard to open up a crypto startup. Where does that talent go? Because every place else around the world, they're looking for people that are technically savvy. And here's Web3 technically savvy in the United States, Canada, UK, uh, Portugal, name, name Bahamas, name a place. Almost there are so many places around the world that are looking for that talent and paying ridiculously well, ridiculously well. India's, India, India's leadership is not thinking properly, and it and it could wind up being damaging if the U.S. goes. We're done with you and your crap siding with Russia and what is clearly a, um, an unnecessary war with accusations provable. I mean, it hasn't been proven in a court of law yet, but you can see accusations of war crimes. And you want to side with that country? Wow. History is not going to do well on you. Anyway, let's get to the numbers. It was a horrible day. Um, and when I say horrible, I mean it was a red day. <laughs> it was an absolute red day. Um, you can see here 10% and worse for a lot of, a lot of coins. Akala, um, DeFi Kingdoms. I mean, everybody, everybody's getting hit with this. You know, companies, you know, coins, coins and projects that were doing well, um, 13, 13% down for CeeLo. That's a big deal. Um, Doge. I was expecting this though, right? And I said this, Doge was going to hit, was going to fly up, right? It flew up, rose a lot because Elon did something else in a completely different industry. Elon breathed, Doge pumped. Well, here's your dump. People are taking profit. To be expected. I'm not mad about that. It is what it is. Um, I think Doge is going to have to prove that it can sustain itself and rise and fall because they're doing work. Right? And showing that they're doing work. I don't see it yet. I don't see it yet. It doesn't mean that I, you know, that, I mean, I'm not going to buy any more Doge. It's just not going to happen. Do I think that they can have, they can experience another pump because Elon says something, does something? Absolutely. Absolutely. But they waited a long time for this and it was a short pump. When Elon did it before, it hit and sustained. This one, it hit and came back down. Just throwing that out there for you. Immutable X down 10%. Wow. That's, that's big. That's that whole GameStop problem that was going on there. Um, on the good side, there isn't any. <laughs> I know I'm an idiot, right? I'm serious. Just look at this. The best coin out there on the plus side went up 0.63%. Not 1%, 0.63%. Yeah. It sucks right now. It is what it is, right? So you just, you just wait and you see how everything goes. But again, nobody's near their all-time highs. Nobody's near their all-time highs. We had announcements today that, hey, 
we're going to drive, you know, nice government said, hey, we're going to drive down our balance sheet. We are going to get the 50 basis points. By doing that, stock markets took a hit. Cryptocurrencies took a hit. Um, I don't know why cryptocurrencies took a hit. It's, a, it's totally separate. You know, it, cryptocurrencies are taking a hit. I, I know why. These cryptocurrencies are taking a hit because you have a lot of institutions that are involved in cryptocurrencies now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when they panic, they panic around everything. Hence, you know, that fake correlation between the two. Until we get greater retail adoption, we can, we're, you know, we, we, we're susceptible to getting hit whenever the stock market takes a, takes a major hit. Now, that was a macro event that had macro, macro reverberations across, across different commodities, different assets, kind of to be expected. All right. Do I think it's going to bounce back? I absolutely think it's going to bounce back. I'm looking at coins that I should get in on because they're on an even bigger sale right now. <coughs> Excuse me. That was horrible. Sorry about that. Fear and greed index dropping quick like a rock to 34. <coughs> Excuse me. We were at like 50 something, 54, you know, well into the neutral zone. Now we're deep into fear little less than the midpoint of fear toward extreme fear. Still, I think there's a lot of pent up energy, a lot of pent up energy. There's a lot of positive things going on. You know, Cardano made a couple of moves doing, doing some business in Africa, you know, doing a partnership in Africa, doing a partnership, I think in Switzerland, made major partnerships. There's a lot of positive energy that's there. And we need to shed some of this negativity before we can realize, whoa, that's positive. That's going to make something pop. This is what we're talking about. And you can see the drop off. I mean, it, it was it was quick right here. I called it out yesterday that, yeah, we weren't doing I'm not yesterday. Yeah. A couple of days ago that we were down at 44 one. OK, that was horrible. Then we came down to 44 over here. We never recovered from this point. We popped up just a little bit and came right back down. Do I expect it to go back up? Yes. When? I don't know. But I think it'll probably be I, I'm thinking later on this week it'll come back up. And, be, and start bouncing around the same space that it was before. I don't think we're going to shoot past anything. I think we're going to bounce around the same space that there was. As you also have news that the United States has levied more sanctions against Russia because that's not going away yet. Putin got on television and he's yapping about how he's fighting the Nazis. You weren't invited to fight the, uh, the Nazis. Do they exist in, in Ukraine? Yes, they do exist in Ukraine. There's a whole battalion in the Ukrainian army that's made up of Nazis. Guess what? Even that battalion has embraced liberals and people from people from the far left as much as they have people from the far right. Why? Because it's more important that they fight for their country than they fight each other. Wow. Amaze balls. Think about that. Something that can unify. Unfortunate it's a war, but it proves that something can unify. Hopefully it goes away and things start to come back up. Just remember that whatever sanctions are levied against anybody, whether they, whether they are official sanctions or something that is negative economically to like in India, like I said, or something like that, you know, there are ramifications and they're not going to be short term. If the war ended tomorrow, sanctions aren't going to end for a long time. Long time. Right now, you're talking about countries around the world we, you know, moving fast to wean themselves off of fossil fuels because they don't want to be depend dependent anymore. I, this crap should have happened 30 years ago. Technologies that we have now, they might have gotten better, but they existed 30 years ago should have been moving then because right now we wouldn't be looking at high oil prices or anything else like that. We'd be whistling as we plugged our vehicles in. Just saying. Cryptocurrencies, like I said, all over the place, just dropping like rocks, dropping like rocks. I want you to pay attention to something though. Luna dropped like a rock, 7%. Luna's still above a hundred bucks. 
Let that wash over you. Terra Luna dropped 7% and it's still at $108. That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. Solana was at 120 a few, you know, a little while ago. It's at 114. Some of these coins are taking hits and basically saying, okay, I can deal with that. There's going to be further upward motion very soon, I believe. That's how I'm looking at my portfolio. That's what I'm talking about with my kids, why I'm thinking a certain way. And I'm sharing that with you. So I would tell you, pay attention to what's going on. Remember that even if everything was green right here, you're way, all of these coins are way off their highs. Not all of them, but mo in the 90, 90 percentile, 95th percentile, these coins are way off their highs, way off their highs. Still a sale going on. And if you need to see everything in a list, here's a list view for you. Coins have taken hits. Just look at this. I will call something out. For the past year, for the past 365 days, who's outperformed who? Ethereum, Bitcoin, just saying. And then I want you to scoot down here to Terra Luna. Yeah, scoot down here to Solana. Uh-huh. Scoot down here to Polygon, to Matic. Uh-huh. Yep. You know, I don't point at SHIB. SHIB is brand new. It's, you know, zero. I mean, Doge is basically brand new. But look at Avalanche. Look at the top 25 coins that are out there. And you can say to yourself, wow. I mean, this is my favorite list or our favorite list. But when you look at this favorite list, you kind of go, wow, some of these coins have, done, has fair, have fared better than the big boys. Some of them have not fared as well as the big boys. They've taken hits. Right. Look at Cardano. It's down for the past year. It's down almost 16 percent. Look at XRP. It's down 30 percent. Now I'm looking at Cardano at a buck. Excuse me, at a dollar six. The hit that was taken today, I would ex I would have expected for it to be lower than a dollar, but it's not. Just saying, it's not. Sale price. Just putting that out there for you. Sale price. Two seconds ago, I think this Matic was at like a what a dollar seventy one. This is day, we're talking about days, days and change, days. Those are big percentages. Understand what coins you're interested in. Understand the projects that they're doing. Understand the utilities or the usefulness of those projects, who they're working with, the partnerships, the security. Start to understand the rhythm and the possibilities of what you want to invest in. Do your own research. You can hear things from me. You can hear things from other people. Do your own research. Drive it home. This is a long video. It wasn't supposed to be this long. I apologize, but I really wanted to drive a few things home. I really want you to take not just a short look, but a longer look at what's going on out there. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. Do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe, definitely hit the notification bell so you know when I'm dropping another video. Have a great day.